Hey, Hope City. It is so good to be with you this morning. My name is Joshua Mills, and I have the very special opportunity of joining you online today. Thank you, Pastor Andrew, and your whole team for making this possible. Wow, what an amazing time we're living in when I can come to you live from Canada. I'm here in Canada. The, they call us the frozen chosen, but the last few days it has been so warm. It's been so hot. It's Summer has arrived, and I know that you're preparing for winter where you are, but today is a very special day because it's Pentecost Sunday. And this is the day when we get to celebrate the arrival of the Holy Spirit on planet Earth. And this is the time when we actually celebrate the Church of Jesus Christ being birthed through the power of the Holy Spirit. I have a few things that I want to share with you this morning in regards to the Holy Spirit and God's angels and how they're connected to you and how you can begin moving in the supernatural in this day. I know that these times have been troubling. They've been disruptive. They have been filled with chaos and confusion. But for you as a believer, God's got you covered. And he's got promises for you. He's got good plans for you. And I want to tell you, not one thing that God has planned for you has changed because of this current situation. Actually, these are going to be the greatest days to see the people of God rise up in the fullness of what God has created you for. These are the days that you were meant for. These are the days when in the natural solutions need to be found. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom, discernment, understanding, creativity, and the Holy Spirit promises to help you. And so in these days ahead, you can be sure that God's going to do some amazing, amazing things. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 1, and we're going to look how, at how the stage was set for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Something that I know for sure is that, you know, whatever Jesus says, God's going to do. There's nothing that Jesus says that's, that's going to go unnoticed. And in Acts chapter 1, and I'm going to turn there with you, and I don't have an online Bible, so you probably get there a little bit faster than me. But Acts chapter 1, looking down in verse 4, Jesus is speaking, and he says, Wait for the promise of the Father. Now, he's speaking about the promise of the Holy Spirit. And here in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, Jesus is actually giving an instruction. And the instruction is, you've got to wait. You've got to wait. You've you got to do something. And what you've got to do is wait. And he tells them where to wait. He says, actually, wait in Jerusalem. He says, uh, wait for the promise of the Father. Uh, for John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. And so do not depart from Jerusalem. And when Jesus said that, you know, I've heard people say that probably more than 500 people heard Jesus give that instruction. But we know that in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, there were only 120 people gathered in that place. Now, it's fascinating to me that Jesus can give an instruction and only some people actually obey the instruction. We've got to learn as glory people. We've got to learn how to hear the instruction of God and follow through on that instruction. In the days to come, our success is not going to be because of our own grandiose ideas and our own good solutions that we can come up with in the natural. Our greatest success is going to be our ability to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit, listening to the instruction of God. And when we do what God has told us to do, we're going to get the results that God has promised to us. Now look at this. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, after Jesus gives the instruction, he tells the people what the promise is. He says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So he's speaking about the promise of the Holy Spirit. And he says, You shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and to the outermost parts of the earth. Now he's speaking about those that would carry the gospel forth. And he's saying it's not going to come because of your own ability, but you're going to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit that's going to give you power to do something that you couldn't do before. 
Now, what's amazing to me is after Jesus gives the instruction and then Jesus talks about the power of the Holy Spirit, and he talks about this promise, the Bible tells us that he ascends up into heaven. I mean, what a miraculous thing to happen. But down in verse 10, it says, while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Now, who were these two men that brought this message after Jesus ascended into heaven? Do you know those two men were actually angels? Angels come in all kinds of forms and packages, I should say. Angels come in different kinds of appearances. The Bible says that he makes his angels wins, his spirits flames of fire. But we also read about different kinds of angels within the scripture, some that have wings, according to Psalm 91 verse 11. And then there's also interesting scriptures that talk about angels that just appear like men. And in Hebrews, it says, you gotta be careful because you might be entertaining angels unaware. Something I know is that angels love to be involved in God's work in the earth. God's angels not only love to be involved in God's work, but they love to be involved in your life because Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, speaking of the angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent to serve those that are heirs of salvation? Let me ask you a question. Are you saved? Are you born again? Have you given your heart to Jesus? Because if so, there are ministering angels that have been assigned to watch over your life, not only watch over you, but to work with you and to serve God's purposes in your life. At the very beginning of Acts, the Holy Spirit is promised and angels show up on the scene. This should be no surprise to us because angels love to be wherever believers are gathered. Angels always surround the lives of believers. There's a flurry of angelic activity whenever people believe and speak God's word. I want you to look at Psalm 103. There's an amazing angel scripture here that so often is just bypassed. You know, the word of God is so filled with so much revelation and so much wonderful glory that sometimes we, we move too quickly through it and we don't absorb all the glory on the pages. But I pray this morning that there's an impartation that's even beginning to take place for you now. I really believe that as I speak about angels and I speak about the work of the Holy Spirit, there's going to be an increase in supernatural visitation in your life. God loves to surround your life with his glory and angels love to hang out wherever the glory is present. Psalm 103, looking down at, let's see here, verse 20, it says, bless the Lord. This is David speaking, David the psalmist. He says, bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. You know, Psalm 103 verse 20 gives us a revelation that angels don't just do whatever they want to do. They actually don't move by their own opinion or their own agenda, but the holy angels of God are completely devoted to the voice of God's word. Whatever God speaks, the angels begin to do. Wherever God speaks, the angels begin to show up. And in this day, you and I, we have the privilege and the opportunity to speak God's word with authority, not just reciting some lines or just, uh, you know, babbling off just vain repetitions, but God gives us the opportunity to speak his word with the knowledge of his glory, speak his word with power and authority. And when we speak God's word in that way, the angels of God begin to show up and the angels of God begin to show up. There's so many times in my life when I've been speaking God's word and all of a sudden I have an angelic encounter. You ask me, what would that angelic encounter be like? Do you see the angels all vividly? Do you see all the details of the angels? You know, sometimes I've seen the angels just like a man, just like I would see you if I saw you in person. But most often I see the, the image or the silhouette, the outline 
of the angel standing in front of me, just enough to know that the angel is there. There's other times I can feel the spirit winds beginning to blow and I can feel the movement of angels around me. Sometimes when I'm looking into the atmosphere, I can see lights just begin, orbs of light begin to appear with different colors that, oh, even right now, I just begin to see them. That one's red. There's another red one. And there's another red one right there. There's three red orbs. Now, I wasn't planning on talking about this because they're there. I'm going to talk about it. Something that the Lord showed me is that when I begin to see the red orbs, the balls, begin to appear, that's not the angel themselves, but that is the gift or the impartation that the angel is holding and the angel is bringing. And the Lord spoke to me many years ago, said that the red represents the blood of Jesus. It represents the healing flow. And so even right now, as I see three healing angels standing here in the room with me, I believe they're here to bring an impartation to you. So if you need healing right now, I want you to reach out and I want you to get ready to receive your healing. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, I thank you that you are so willing to heal. Lord, you're more than ready to pour out your healing virtue upon your sons and upon your daughters. Lord, I thank you that you've even commissioned healing angels right now with a healing impartation from heaven to be brought into our lives. Lord, we lift up our hands right now and we receive that miracle touch. Oh. Lord, I thank you that the healing comes right now. It's flowing right now. It's like a warm heat that's flowing from the top of your head. It's flowing all the way down through your physical body. Some of you are going to begin to feel it like an electrical sensation. Others, you might begin to feel like an oil begin to pour down upon your head or even on the back of your neck. Some of you are going to begin to feel the release in your body where there's been tension, where there's been aches and pains. The pain goes right now. The aches go right now. The tension goes right now in Jesus' name. There's breakthrough that's coming to your physical body with supernatural healing being delivered from heaven into your life right now. Whether you see these angels or not in your home doesn't change the truth that God has healing available for you. The Bible says that by his stripes, you have been healed. We are healed. The Bible says that God heals us of all the diseases, all, all disease that can be named. He, Jesus Christ, has the name above every other name. Every name of disease and sickness and infirmity must bow to the name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus. Right now, healing virtue flows into your life, even on this Pentecost Sunday. Thank you, Jesus, that your Holy Spirit is moving right now in power. Your angels are working with the Holy Spirit to deliver miracles in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you for it. Well, if you're receiving miracles right now, you ought to write it down. You ought to testify about it. You ought to share about it. God is working wonders, even this morning here in Hope City Online. How exciting to see God working miracles. Just a few moments ago as I was sitting here, at the desk, there were little tiny feathers beginning to fall through the atmosphere. I mean, real, real tiny little feathers. And one by one, me and my wife, we began to see these feathers falling. And I knew that there was angelic activity swirling around me. And I believe that angelic activity is swirling around you even right now. May your home be filled with the angels of God. May your business be filled with the angels of God. We don't get our eyes on the angel. We don't worship the angel. We don't pray to the angel or, or, or focus on the angel. We focus on God. But the Bible tells us in Matthew, it says, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and then all these things, all these things, all is inclusive of everything, exclusive of nothing. All these things shall be added unto you. And some of those things that are added, is angelic encounter in divine supernatural visitation. Lord, I thank you that you're doing it this morning. Whoa, <laughs> I can feel that realm just opening so wide this morning. Angels respond to the voice of God's word. When it's spoken with power and authority, the angels show up. Now, let me ask you a question. Has Jesus given you authority? Of course, the answer is yes. He says, all power and authority I give to you. So now you can speak the word. 
I can speak the word. And when we speak God's word in power and authority, the angels begin to move. When Jesus was speaking God's word to the early believers, angels were activated, I believe, and set in place to help usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Those two men standing at the ascension of Jesus were activated, I believe, as Jesus was giving the instruction and he was speaking the promise. Those two angels were sent on divine assignment to relay a further message that God wanted to give to his people. This is one of the things that the angels will do. Now let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Let's turn there. This is now the day of Pentecost. And it says here, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, there is a revelation here. Here the believers were waiting in Jerusalem because Jesus told them to do so. Many scholars and theologians have said that these early believers were actually gathered together in prayer. One thing that I know for sure is that when God's people pray, something begins to happen in the spiritual realm. Manifest glory is activated, miracles are activated, and even angels are activated when God's people begin to pray. If we look throughout the Bible, we can even see the evidence of this. And I wrote a book uh, not too long ago, just last fall. It's called Seeing Angels, How to Recognize and Interact with Your Heavenly Messengers. And I encourage you to get a copy of this book if you're able to. It's available anywhere you like to get your Christian books. I want to read something for you that I gathered here in the book, speaking about prayer. I noticed that in Genesis 18... When Abraham interceded in prayer, two angels were released to go to Sodom in order to save Lot and his family. In Exodus 14, when Moses prayed, an angel stood between the army of Egypt and the children of Israel, bringing great deliverance for God's chosen people. In 2 Kings 19, King Hezekiah prayed to the Lord for help, and God responded by sending his angel to kill 185,000 enemy soldiers. But even Jesus prayed and activated angels. According to Luke 22, we see that Jesus prayed on the Mount of Olives and an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him during his time of need. It's clear by the scriptures that when God's people pray, God shows up. And one of the very common ways that God will show up is through the ministry of angels. Whether you see them or not doesn't change the fact that they have been commissioned, activated, and released on your behalf to move, to bring you into the promise that God has spoken to you. Now look at this. The believers are gathered together, praying in Acts chapter 2, right? They're all gathered on the day of Pentecost, and suddenly something begins to change. What changed? It was wind and fire. The Bible says it was a sound of a violent wind, a mighty rushing wind, and tongues of fire were released, and, and fire was seen. Now, it shouldn't be a surprise to us because both the book of Psalms and Hebrews, as I already mentioned, says that he makes his spirits wind, speaking of the angels, and his servants flames of fire, also speaking about the angels. I believe that as God's people were praying, they were waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit, and suddenly God's angels showed up like wind and like fire, and you might even begin to feel the heat right now. You might begin to feel the wind right now. If you don't feel anything, that's okay. Just enjoy the glory of God that's coming to you by faith. But I'm telling you this, that on the day of Pentecost, there was no doubt about it. The atmosphere changed. Wind was blowing. Fire came. I believe it was the presence of God's angels ushering in, bringing the introduction of the Holy Spirit to God's people on earth. It was like the Holy Spirit had his own uh, uh, procession, uh, parade of, in front of him, heavenly, glorious demonstration, saying the Holy Spirit has come, the Holy Spirit is here, pay attention. Angelic movement began to take place on the day of Pentecost, ushering in the divine presence of the Holy Spirit. And in that atmosphere, the early believers were filled with the Spirit. Now, we don't get filled with angels. Listen, we got to put things in proper perspective. The Holy Spirit is God. Angels are God's helpers. 
but the Holy Spirit is God. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they got ignited for the work of the ministry. Something that this new infilling provides as well is the ability to pray in the spirit. The Bible tells us that they, they received a heavenly language. They began to speak in unknown tongues. It wasn't common to them, but suddenly, they begin to pray in the spirit. They begin to do something that they had never done before. A wise mentor once told me it's a form of insanity to do the same thing and expect a different result. God's giving us his God ideas, God solutions, and even his God language to go in the spirit to a place that we've never gone before in order to receive from the spirit a blessing, miracles, encounters, visitation, transformation that we've never received before. Oh, aren't you so thankful for the Holy Ghost? Aren't you so thankful for the Holy Spirit of God that is here to fill you, to lead you, to direct you, to help you, to comfort you, to be an encourager in your life, but also to be one that activates every gift of the Spirit to be fully present in operation as you go forth as a follower of Christ. As you pray in the Spirit, even more angels are released to work in your life. I mean, if you go further in the, the Bible, you begin to see that in Acts chapter 12, Peter was thrown in prison. It looked like a dismal situation. I mean, uh, James had already been not just persecuted, but he had been actually murdered and executed because of his faith. And, and when Herod saw that it pleased some people, he he got Peter, threw him in prison, and the only reason why he didn't kill him right away is because it was Passover. But the night before King Herod was about to execute him, the Bible tells us very clear that the church, this early church, was in constant prayer. And I don't think they were just praying prayers out of a book. I don't think that they were just praying classic prayers that they had prayed many times before. Remember, these are the same believers that had encountered the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And some of those believers, because of the touch they received 14 years prior when the Holy Spirit was dispatched on earth, they knew that when trouble came, they need to pray and not just pray any kind of way, but pray in the Spirit. When you begin to pray in the Spirit, you pray past where you are right now. When you pray in the Spirit, you pray past your circumstance. When you pray in the Spirit, you begin to pray things that you don't even know you need in the natural, but God begins to put his vocabulary, his language. He begins to give you a heavenly tongue to bring forth the manifestation of heaven in your home, in your business, in your community, wherever you go. One of my favorite things to do is pray when I'm walking down the street. I love to pray when I'm driving down the road. I love to pray when I'm in the shower. And I oftentimes sing in tongues. Now I'm encouraging myself in the Holy Ghost. But when the early church was praying, and I believe they're praying in the spirit. The Bible tells us that that night before Herod was about to execute Peter, that an angel showed up in a bright light in the prison cell. <laughs> and suddenly, Peter got the deliverance that he needed in that moment. And it was almost like, if you read the whole testimony in Acts chapter 12, it's absolutely remarkable. But what happened to Peter can also happen to you. If you need a breakthrough, pray in the Holy Ghost and expect God to break through. And he might just send some angels to your home. The Bible tells in Acts chapter 10 that when Cornelius prayed, an angel showed up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in his living room. Angels can show up in your living room. Angels can show up in the middle of a financial situation, financial crisis. Angels can show up in the most bleakest of circumstances. But when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, it begins to activate things in the Spirit. You see the Holy Spirit within you 
begins to pray and invite the angelic host to come around you. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit fills you to be supernaturally equipped for service to God. Angels come to surround you and assist you in your active service to God. This is how the Holy Spirit and angels work together to ensure that you have everything you need to do what you are called to do. I want you to expect, anticipate greater angelic encounter, greater angelic activation, even as you open up to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit that has been promised to you. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I thank you for my friends that are right there being ministered to by your spirit, even as they hear your word and receive the impartation by faith. Lord, I thank you that there's a new and a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit coming upon them within them. But Lord, even as they pray in the spirit, I thank you for new angels that are being activated all around them on every side in Jesus mighty name. Lord, I thank you for taking them into greater depths, greater places of your glory than they've ever been before. May they go deeper in you. May they do everything that you've called them to do and that your plans would prosper in their life. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. I love you guys. Thank you again for the opportunity. I'm Joshua Mills, and I hope to see you again soon. God bless you. Thank you for watching Hope City Online. We really hope you were blessed by the message today. And if God's spoken to you, why don't you leave us a comment? We would love to hear from you. If you do enjoy our messages, you can press the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any one of our sermons. And if you want to give to us today, the link is in the description. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.